So let's talk about gear interactions. In this gear chain, there are three types of gears. There's the driver gear, which provides the rotational input of the system, which in this case is a hand crank, but it could also be something like an electric motor. Then there's the driven gear, which is the one that is turned by the gear, and that is the output of the system. Connecting the two gears sometimes will be an idler gear, which transfers the movement between the two gears on each side of it. So it's important to choose the order of your gears carefully as that can, con that can dictate the speed and torque that is outputted by the system. The speed of a gear is measured in revolutions per minute or revolutions per second. In this case, if I rotate it once in one second, that's one RPS or 60 RPM. And you can see that with every revolution that this gear has, this one, ha this smaller gear has a much greater speed. And that will come into play later when we talk about gear ratios. Similarly, torque of a gear is how much force it can output. So essentially, if a gear has higher torque, uh, let's say it could uh, lift a heavier object if you were to uh, hook it up to a rack for some reason. But essentially, it's just how strong the gear is. But that's, that's a bit oversimplifying, but take it as you will. The relationship between gear, um, speed and torque with gear systems is inversely proportional. In other words, as one variable increases, the other will decrease. If you try to increase torque in the relationship, then speed will decrease. And if you try to increase speed in the relationship, then torque will decrease. Assuming that the input force is the same. So let's demonstrate. All right, so right now you can see that the driver gear is much larger than the driven wheel. This is 40 teeth and this is 20 teeth. You'll see that when I rotate this one time, that this rotates two times. So that's one time for this one. And then that's two. So this makes sense because the gear ratio between these two gears is actually two. So if the gear ratio is three, for example, the smaller gear will move three times as fast as the big gear. And if we're looking at it from the torque side, then the smaller gear will have one third the torque that the big gear has. So you might be wondering, why is speed and torque inverse? I'm sure there's a lot of complicated physics that goes into it, but here's the way I like to look at it. If we rotate this bigger gear half of a turn, this full gear, I mean, the smaller gear rotates um, a full turn. And I like to think that the force that you put into rotating it this small 180 degrees is spread out across 360 degrees of rotation. And that's why the force gets, uh, or torque gets decreased as you transfer from a big gear to a smaller gear. Now, conversely, talking about speed, if you that's just based on the number of teeth that there are. For every 180 degrees on this gear, there are 20 teeth, which means that 20 teeth will be rotated on the smaller gear, which corresponds exactly. So if I look at it from the smaller gear's perspective, if I rotate it 360 degrees, that 360 degrees of force gets distributed over this 180 degrees. And that's why, that's how I like to view it. If you guys have another way of viewing the relationship between speed and torque, please list it in the comments down below. But I just think it's a very interesting way of representing the relationship between speed and torque. And so now while we're here, let's link up our electric motor to our system. So let's take this off. All right, so now those are hooked up. Let's toggle motor one. Right here, this is the driver gear because it has an electric motor driving it. And this is the driven gear because it's being driven by this driver gear. What is going on? Hello? All right, so if we connect it to an electric motor, you can see that this is the driver gear because it's being provided with power by the electric motor which is in turn driving this driven gear. We can even make the smaller gear the driver gear, which will in turn drive the bigger gear. And so while I have this 
smaller gear being the driver gear. This is the driven gear and this is the idler gear. And so something interesting about the idler gear is that it actually transfers, it just, it just purely transfers the movement of the gears to this other gear. So now that I have the motor hooked up to the smaller gear, you can see that this is how they mesh. The driver gear meshes with the idler gear, which meshes with the driven gear. And the interesting thing about the idler gear is that the number of teeth it has actually doesn't matter. It really just only transfers the movement of the teeth because as let's say like five teeth go down here, that means five teeth are going to go up here. There's not really a change in the amount of teeth going up or down because they go down and up at the same rate. And so the function of an idler gear is there can be two functions. It's either to carry the rotational movement across a longer distance or a linear distance, or because when gears mesh, they rotate in opposite directions, it can be made so that the driver gear and the driven gear rotate at the same, uh, in the same direction. So before, if we get rid of this, this gear and this gear would rotate in opposite directions. This one could be clockwise, this one would be counterclockwise. But if we want to make this gear rotate the same direction as this one, we'd have to put an idler gear between them so that the middle gear is what um, turns in the opposite direction and the other two turn the same. So you can see that these two gears have a different speed. This one's definitely moving at a much faster pace, but this gear will output more torque. And so between these two choices, the, between the black motor with this big gear and between the gray motor with the small gear, the outcomes of using them are very different as the input. If you use the larger gear as the driver wheel, then the driven wheel will be much faster, but it won't have a lot of torque. If you use the smaller gear as the input gear with the larger gear as the output gear, then the output gear will be much slower, but it'll have more torque. And this is assuming that both of these input the same force, which is the motors. And so you can use these in different ways to, to achieve uh, either a desired speed or a desired torque, whether it be to lift something up or to make something go fast. All right, so that's all for now on today's episode. In our next, in our next video, we're going to be talking about the structural elements that you have available in Fisher Technics.